<laughs> Welcome back to another episode of With the Chiefs. We are joined today by um, Charlie Doherty, Sweet. Uh, up and coming, up and coming uh, gun runner. He's recently just come back from national cross country where he finished sixth. Um, and me and Charlie used to train together some time ago um, when I was doing 800 meters with uh, Central Performance and getting coached by Ben Lee. But um, it seems like Charlie's always just been on the rise and, um, yeah, pretty excited for this one to catch up and kind of dig into his training and, um, yeah, talk about how things have gone and, and what's to come. So welcome to the, to the show, Charlie. Welcome, Charlie. Thanks, Dom. Thanks, Lou. Sorry, I thought this was a, uh, a cooking podcast. I thought this was with the chef. <laughs> <laughs> It's not. Um, <laughs> damn. All right. Uh, all right. So we're not talking about. Uh, <laughs> we're not talking about. Um, all right, bolognese. That's fine. <laughs> How is? I can't believe no one's made that joke yet. <laughs> Actually, it's pretty yeah, rogue. Okay. It's it's pretty rogue to tell you the truth. <laughs> That's good. Off to a cracker. <laughs> Off to a cracker after the terrible start we've had from a technical standpoint as you'll <laughs> notice that we have no video but we'll see uh, we'll see how we go um normally <laughs> normally we start off with a bit of a training update what have you how's like your last week gone or just a training update in general charlie um training update i've hit 161ks this week um yeah so last week i had i did 120 because of a race but i usually like to keep it around 160. Um, I felt pretty crap on Wednesday. I usually do a double there, um, but I just made a longer run in the other. Um, but yeah, being down in Melbourne, it's kind of a solo session on, on Saturday morning and a solo long run. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, everything's been going pretty good um, so far. And I'll probably just con- t- uh, keep on ticking off some 160s for the next few weeks before I have a bit of a down week, sort of at the end of October. That's that's basically the plan. Wow, that's... um pretty high mileage yeah so have i shocked you guys off the bat <laughs> <laughs> there's the delay that's the problem how are you holding up um yeah holding up all right <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> holding up pretty good um yeah i've i've just basically moved to 160 i mean i did it a lot last year but moved moved to it probably three months ago and um yeah, I've been holding up all right. Just just uh, having the occasional down week every every month or or whatever uh, usually helps. I usually go to about one twenty to to one thirty on those down weeks. Um, and yeah, don't really take any of those runs too hard. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely definitely helping me get through all the mileage. Impressive, very impressive. Um, and so you ran a marathon as well, the M seven marathon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was a has a funny marathon. <laughs> um, so I basically didn't really sign up until like Wednesday the week of, because you know there's a bit of a prize money in that race. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I saw it was like I saw it was like two and a half thousand dollars or something for third. I mean for the second and and like third was like fifteen hundred and first. I kind of knew Coxie was probably like I heard just he rocks up all the time and. And I knew he was probably going to win it. So I wasn't really going for that $3,500 prize purse. But um, with Liam Adams over at the Com Games, he usually goes for it as well. I was like, I could swoop in here and, and trot around for a marathon and um, and might might get a bit of a bag. <laughs> so I did that on Wednesday. I actually drove up Saturday night and the race is on Sunday morning. So I did the Dick Telford Hill session on Saturday. <laughs> which was so rough. That's that's probably one of the hardest sessions Dick runs. It's like a 3K hill climb, and then you've got to do all these short, steep ones mm. out the back of uh, Mount Stromlo, if anybody knows that area. Mm, yep, yep. And, um, yeah, so, so so I did, yeah, had had a big bowl of pasta Sunday night and then woke up and had um, half a Powerade and, and got on my way. <laughs> <laughs> I just did the marathon of that, which was good fun. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have any fuel or anything. <laughs> oh, really? Jeez. Um but yeah, no, it was cruisy. I was just, yeah, I didn't eat or anything. I was like, oh, this will be fine. And I actually felt good because um, you know how everyone's like, oh, 30Ks, you hit a bit of a wall. Hmm. I was like, oh, gee, I'm not really feeling anything just yet. So I started to pick up the splits a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it was fun. 
was, it was a lot of fun. Um, ended up coming in second and walking away with, with some money there, which was great. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, uh, no plans on doing a marathon anytime. So oh, maybe next year actually you're at the M7, but <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was, yeah. So I was coming in second and then it's an out and back and I turned around and the bloke who was in third was only like 200 meters down the road from me. Oh, shit. Um, so I was like, shit, I got to put in like a bit of an effort here just so I can make sure I gap him. Like that's an $800 loss or whatever it was. <laughs> um, so I ended up doing the second half in 75, I think, which was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> so big negative. Yeah, as well. so I was happy. I was actually happy with that run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It felt good. That's awesome. And everyone in Canberra knows I like to crank the long runs anyway. Yeah. I was just about <laughs> to ask, like, do you usually kind of push the long run a bit? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I mean, even this morning's run around Melbourne, um, was pretty big, quick 352 average, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I, I do like to push the long runs. Um, yeah, I mean, I just find I kind of respond pretty well to it and I don't usually get injured from it and I can kind of back up pretty well. Uh, for Tuesday session, like my Monday is basically almost a recovery day as well as Friday. Um, just cause that's kind of like how I, how I like to run this, the, uh, the weekend of training. Yeah. Awesome. Well done. Um, yeah. It sounds like you're hmm. going along pretty well then. What's, um, the next race coming up? Yeah. So, um, ideally the plan is to go to Bernie, Bernie 10. That's at the, um, end of October, October 23rd. Um, that's a massive race. I know Aaron Parker from my squad wants to do it as well. And he's a, uh, 29. I think he's either 23 or 33 or something wow. for the 10 K. Um, so he's, that'd be the perfect sit. <laughs> um, yeah. So the plan is to do that and hopefully get a sub 30 and like, well, the, the perfect race would be like a Zatapet qualifier, a 29, 45. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's, I mean, one thing at a time, but, um, yeah, definitely looking to get that 29.45. I think I'm in a pretty, pretty good shape to get that at the moment. Um, been, yeah, running pretty well. Mm. I mean, that, uh, that sixth place at nationals that you, you mentioned earlier definitely has given me a lot of confidence. I mean, like even in sessions and I did a race last weekend as well. Um, and yeah, giving me a lot of confidence in both those things that, you know, I could probably run, probably run under that time. So yeah. I mean, the aim is just to get their fit. Hopefully these long runs and these big weeks don't catch up to me before then. <laughs> but um, after Zatapex, fine. <laughs> yeah. And um, how was um, the National Cross? What, how was the race? How did it kind of unfold? I mean, yeah, it was It was actually, uh, it was great. Um, I'm a, yeah, actually, you guys might have picked up on this already just because I'm a, I'm a bit bit reckless but um yeah i mean everything was last minute on the start line it turned out um (laughs) it turned out like i i um you know how when you do the pins like it's kind of hard to to get it on the singlet without going through both sides (laughs) so i was trying to put my shirt on and like the singlet was closed off on the inside so i was like standing in the marshalling area for five minutes without my shirt on (laughs) trying to figure out how these pins were working and (laughs) because Because like I was that I was kind of nervous, so like an official saw me. And she's like, "Mate, like I'll do this for you. Just um, <laughs> figure yourself out for a minute." And I was like, "Oh, thanks." <laughs> um, so I didn't. I mean, I got. I was, was lucky that um, the girls in front of us, the race before us, was was a bit slow because I hadn't done any run throughs on the start line um, or any high knees or anything. Yeah. So I, I managed to get a couple of run throughs in while the girls were wrapping up, and then um, yeah, I mean couple of minutes later the uh the gun goes off and um i kind of had a race strategy before anyway that um i wanted to go out a bit slower because that's kind of what i like to do and it works out pretty well for me particularly in cross-country races because there's a like bad habit i reckon of people going out too quick and paying for it um and it actually worked out really really well that race like i don't know if you saw any of the photos or anything but it was so muddy like the whole yeah I mean, a lot of the race was just, yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't run quick at all. Mm. Um, and when it wasn't muddy, it was like a headwind. It was just like an absolute abomination <laughs> of, um, of conditions. But, um, yeah, I mean, that worked out really well for me because thankfully people started to come back to me, um, after a couple of Ks. Um, I mean, it was, 
I mean, pulling up to Matty Clark, I was just like, mate, oh, this is this is ridiculous. This guy's just so much better than me as a runner. Um, so I was like, all right, I'll pull up to him, and then I sat and then I sat on him for like five meters. I was like, hang on, I can go around this bloke, and then I went around him, <laughs> um, and that was that was a great feeling. But um, yeah, it was it was it was that was definitely the race plan, and it and it turned out really well for me. Yeah, it seems like you you've got that cross country race plan kind of dialed in, like. Um, I remember back in school, you were always like absolutely nailed the cross country races and kind of start up the back and, and end up just, yeah, telling everyone up. Um, <clears throat> do you think that experience has kind of helped you in the situations like that? Yeah, yeah, for sure, actually. Um, cause I mean, I was, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. I've been trying like different sort of things going out harder, but, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, this race, I was like, kind of stick to the guns, stick to the, uh, the old high school racing methodology um and yeah it's it's worked out well because i find out if i go too hard like i just yeah i just blow up really quickly because i'm not as quick as some other folks over 1500 meters or whatever so i I feel like i just gotta take my time with it a little bit um and try and yeah reel the field back in yeah awesome and um i guess like touching on your coaching sort of background like you've you've been running for a while now um where did it all kind of start um well hang on i think i've just given away my whole race race strategy for the rest of my life <laughs> <laughs> well if you want we can we can do some editing i got um, a he came on thinking he'd be talking about the recipe. <laughs> it was a good race that's it yeah yeah just cut that <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just cut the 30 seconds where it's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I go out r- really hard and that works really well for me. <laughs> um, no, yeah, so where did it all start for me? <laughs> where did it start for me? Um, yeah, I mean, back in 86, uh, no, I'm just kidding. I uh, started probably, probably took it more seriously when I was like 17 years old, so 2016, I'd say, um, I started to really sort of focusing on things because I was still playing AFL up until um, like year nine or whatever, which was 2015. Um, and then I just sort of getting too small and I was never really any good at it anyway. Um, and yeah, so I started focusing on running about then. Um, I didn't really know what actually got it into me. Maybe mum, mum, and, mum and dad... Um, took me in some fun runs when I was younger and I was always kind of like a little bit handy over the, over the um, 1500s and whatever through those junior years of high school. So I think I just pursued it from that. Um, and then it was, it was great actually through the school system as well. Cause we had, um, like, I don't know, just a really good setup. There was a few people in the years above me who were, who were sort of following a similar sort of training outside of school environment that kind of pushed me along to, to move in, with um with them and trained with them um and yeah so i think everything just kind of kind of flowed on from like one thing from another um yeah i mean and that's how i kind of moved to moved out of the school training and ended up with with john adderden as a coach and then on to ben liddy and then um yeah ended up moving down to canberra i mean yeah, I mean, everything's just kind of flown from from connections and other people just kind of pushing me to go one way or another. Mm. What was um moving to Canberra like? That that seems like a a pretty big step to take. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So um, I don't know. I always so I did a year at uni in Sydney afterwards, and then I was kind of like, if I'm ever gonna move from Sydney, it's probably gonna be now while I'm at uni, like I don't really have a job that's going to keep me locked in here for a second. Um, So I started thinking about like colleges in the U S as well. And then, um, I mean, just colleges in general, like it's so expensive, even if you get like a partial scholarship or even if you get like a full scholarship, it's not going to be anywhere, anywhere great at my level. Um, So like with, with Matt Dempsey, um he was probably the biggest influence on me actually i'm not sure i know you probably know him dom because he went to school with us Mm. um but i'm not sure if you know him luke he um he definitely had a bit of an influence on me moving down here because he was a he was like a 402 runner when um before he moved down to canberra and then turned into a 341 guy 
mm. um, under the training of Dick Telford. So, I mean, I kind of started looking into Dick and then I kind of knew a few people from the squad as well. But, like, the, the depth that he had um, just before I moved down was absolutely insane. It was like Jordan Guzman was a 339 guy. Mm. They had, I mean, yeah, as I said, Dempsey was a... Um, 341 guy, Rory Hunter just moved down. Mm-hmm. Now we're like a, a 337 guy. I think actually Guzman was 337 as well. And Josh Johnson was a 339 guy as well. So I was like, this is a better field than what you're going to get in any college anyway. So um, if I wanted to take my running to the, like outside of Sydney, I feel like this was probably the best, the best uh, squad to join. Um, honestly, in Australia at the moment. And it was really... Um, I mean, obviously, competition pro- was probably MTC there, but I didn't really want to move down to Melbourne just because mm. of proximity and I'm not sure how, how well I would have fit into MTC. Mm. Um, I mean, yeah, and I had a twin sister. Well, I have a twin sister who's down here as well, so I felt like it wasn't too difficult of a move. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm really, really enjoying my time down here at the moment. Still a great squad. A few of those guys have moved on, but... Um, I mean, Jai and Rory are still absolutely smashing it down here, and they've they've just come back from Europe, so they're going to be flogging, flogging everybody on the track in the next couple of weeks. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that was probably probably the, the best thing. But I mean, Canberra's just like easily the the best city in Australia or the best place to run in Australia. I mean, and ev- I mean, I've lived in a few houses, probably four different places around Canberra. One for every year that I've been here, mm. and. Within 2Ks, you can get onto this trail, this network of trails that basically goes like for as far as you want. And you can just, yeah, just run on these trails for forever. And it's just like, it's so good. You don't get that anywhere else in any other city um, in Australia. So, I mean, the training here is just awesome. I mean, Stromlo as well, that place you do, it's like perfect K reps, perfectly, yeah, like manicured grass and whatever. It's just, yeah. it's sensational. Yeah, fire up. It, um, mm. when you kind of spell it out like that, it's, uh, it sounds like a pretty good place actually. Um, I've been there a couple of times, just like doing the marathon each year and yeah, it, it's got a pretty special vibe about it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, definitely pretty underrated in terms of, uh, running cities in Australia. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, do you do much like, um, strength work as well on top of all the running or? Yeah, I can give you a layout of the week if you'd like. Do you want me to run through that? Like when I double and everything? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll start from Monday. So Monday, um, it's usually an hour in the morning. And then I go for 40 minutes in the afternoon with some strides. Um, and then Tuesday's 40 minutes in the morning and then the session in the afternoon. That's a track session. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> That's that's at the ALS, which is pretty convenient for me. It's literally like I could probably jog there quicker than I could drive. Um, and then yes, yeah, so that session's like Dick. Dick really loves doing things like the quarter session, or um, well, at this point in time, just like coming into summer, or he does like half quarters, so mm-hmm. like uh, four by four hundred, five by three hundred, six by two hundred, um, all off floats or jogs is something okay. that we usually do. So it's basically finish the lap, uh, floating or jogging. Um, and then yeah, Wednesdays, I'm usually a bit stiff in the morning. So I go for about a 35 minute jog and then I usually do an 18 K in the afternoon. Um, I found that it's just way easier. Most people like to do that medium sort of long run in the morning, but I just find I pull up so bad. Um, so I like to kind of get that done in the afternoon when I'm feeling a little bit better and a little bit more working up, uh, Thursdays, 40 minutes in the morning. And this is actually kind of where it changed up for me pretty recently. So I actually can't make Dick's training times because it's because of work. It's a little bit earlier on Thursdays. It's like 4 p.m. start on Thursdays. So it means I've got to leave work at like 3.30, which is just never really going to happen. Um, yeah, so I kind of do my own thing. I do. I go back to the track at the AES just because it's kind of close. And there's a little bit of a, a section around there where I do a threshold. I do usually a 3K threshold. And then I usually do some quicker like 400s or, or 600s or 300s or something like that um, off a bit more recovery. And then I usually finish with another 
um, probably two and a half to three K threshold. So, and then, yeah, Fridays is 10 Ks. Saturdays is um, usually K reps at Stromlo or Hills, but usually just K reps. So that's five by K, five by 500. Um, usually off at the moment, that's usually, that's what the session is usually off a four minute cycle. And then the, tell you what, these 500 reps are ridiculous. They're like jog 30 meters recovery. It's just like the hardest thing in the, in the world. Um, <laughs> cause there's this, there's this 500 meter loop <laughs> at Stromlo that you can do. And like, you can basically jog across the start, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's like 30 meters. It ends, it ends 30 meters from where it starts. It's actually like, it's hell, <laughs> but, um, so that's, that's fun. And then, yeah, it's usually like a 40 minute jog Saturday Arvo and then Sunday long runs 25 Ks. And then gyms are, uh, Wednesday mornings and Sunday Arvo's at the moment. And they're, they're like pretty lightweight just cause I'm doing a fair amount of running. <laughs> it's just like basically physio exercises just got to throw myself into the gym and make myself motivated to do it. Mm. Fair amount of training there. <laughs> and, um, JT, it sounds like a big week. Like, yeah. A lot of doubling. Yeah. So three sort of sessions. Yeah. I mean, and a lot of sleeping as well. A lot of napping. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the most <laughs> important part. Yeah. <laughs> uh, boys. Yeah, it is a fair bit. Um, but I mean, most of the, most of the jogs are um, pretty cruisy. Yeah, sorry, what was that, Luke? I was about to jump in and say that I don't know when to jump in, which is which is literally the problem. But um, yeah. no, no, no. Well, because um, you've obviously had quite a few coaches, What um, that's your training now. I guess, how has it sort of changed over time, would you say, just in a general sense? Um, yeah, well... I mean, school training, we probably won't even talk about that. But um, when I first moved to like... <laughs> no, no, a little going. Oh, I, yeah, I can't even remember it, to be honest. It was like it's five years ago and now I think... Oh, well, probably okay. well over. But um, after, like, I mean, after that, I moved to John Adderden. Um, He was a great coach. He was actually coaching one of our rival schools, Kings. Um, he basically just did a lot of speed work, which was great for a junior. I mean, when I was like 16, 17 kind of thing um i sort of yeah really helped me with with my 1500 meter progression getting that sort of stuff under the belt um yeah so like quick 400 meter reps so that was basically an 800 1500 meter squad when i was sort of targeting the 1500 five uh it's not 5k 3k and um yeah yes yeah, so that was just like jumping with 800 meter sessions with guys like mason cohen and, and jai Parrott and all those sort of folks um and then when everybody sort of transitioned to Ben Liddy after that, <clears throat> um, it was sort of similar. You could see Liddy took took um, a few notes out of John's book, but he definitely made it his own thing as well. Like he he sort of he sort of knew that I was transitioning to a sort of a five k type of area, so it was um, it was definitely like more K reps, more sort of mile repeats on Tuesdays and then some, some quicker stuff on Thursdays. And one of the staples of actually both those coaches was Saturday hill reps around funny phone. I'm not sure if you know that area. I know you do Dom, but um, that's always a tough session. Yeah, it's yeah. just like probably, yeah, it's probably like, I don't know how big the sessions would get maybe up to seven, eight Ks, but um, yeah, just a lot of hill reps, which is, which was tough all the time. Um, yeah, so, but Liddy's, Liddy's Tuesday sessions were probably um, different to Dick's sort of K reps type of sessions. I mean, that probably the two that I'd compare them against each other. But um, yeah, Liddy would always have like a little bit longer recoveries after K rep. Like it might be two minutes instead of, instead of um, like the one minute that you might get off a four minute cycle. Um, yeah, so he definitely focused a lot more on on quality, which was great when you're trying to um, focus on the 15s and fives and and whatever. Um, but yeah, as I said, now like Dick's definitely somebody who likes to do just everything. Basically, is is aerobic. Um, yeah, like the the Tuesday sessions now are all off basically floats and jogs. Uh, we don't really get into sort of the quick 
quick sort of stuff until February or, or January, probably January, actually, when we all go up to Perisher. Um, whereas <clears throat> Liddy and John used to kind of do that stuff year round. Um, I mean, which both of them definitely pr pretty good and, and very valid, um, sort of training, training philosophies, but, um, yeah, Dick's obviously of the thought that it doesn't really take too long to get your speed back. Um, which is yeah, fair. And it kind of, and it, and it's been working for me at the moment. Um, yeah, so that's basically how it's, oh, and also Dick sessions are, are a fair bit longer. I mean, Lydia and, and John were kind of, um, probably seven to seven, probably seven K was probably the max a session would be, which is probably enough. Um, but yeah, Dick can sometimes like, he loves a 10 K threshold every now and then. And, um, yeah, even the, the, the K reps and the five by 500 at the moment, sort of with all the jogging, we kind of do in between gets up to eight and a half Ks. Um, and even Tuesday's session at the moment, it's like eight and a half Ks on the track. So everything's like fairly big with a 5k warm up and a 5k cool down. It's like 18, 18 K session. So yeah, I think it's definitely a lot of volume based at the moment. Hmm. It's interesting. I guess, um, Liddy has yeah produced some pretty good results with his 800 guys. Um, but yeah, Dick similarly seems to work as well, but, um, interesting sort of differences. Uh, you mentioned the, a camp to Perisher. Um, how's that altitude sort of been? In the past? Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that, um, Dick loves is, is everybody going to Perisher. I mean, it's so fun off there. Um, if you, if you can keep yourself entertained, it's, it's great. Um, like, yeah, the trade, it's just so good to have like a three week kind of period from the start of January to sort of the end or like early February, um, where you can just focus on running and sleeping and eating and basically that's it. Um, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's awesome. You get a good group up there. Last year I actually trained with a, with a different group because I was doing this study with ACU and they like paid for your accommodation and paid for all your food and whatever. And I was like, yeah, this is perfect. I'm going to do that. Um, so there was a bunch of people in doing that study from like all over the country. And then Dick's guys were up there at the same time. So there ended up being like 30 people at track sessions on Tuesdays, which is absolutely unreal. Um, yeah. Yep. And yeah. So, um, now that Jai and Rory are kind of back in the country, They'll, um, they'll stay probably in Canberra for a couple of months and then head up to Perisher basically from December to whenever, just coming back down, um, every now and then for races and whatever. Um, but yeah, no, Parish is, mm -hmm. Parish is great. We usually do the run up to Cozzy every now and then, which, um, which is hilarious because you have so many tourists just like walking up with all the sticks and whatever, and we're just like <laughs> running past without the shirt on. <laughs> And it's just, it's just blowing their mind. They're like, they're like, what the hell? <laughs> it's just so funny. You feel like an absolute legend. They're all like cheering you on your way down. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's just so funny. It just, it just blows people's minds that you can run up there. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so, so that's, that's always great. And there's, there's a sauna in the lodge that we usually stay at as well, which gets, um, definitely gets abused. I've come out very lightheaded a few times. <laughs> Jai, Jai Edwards likes to absolutely crank it in there. <laughs> um, so that's always funny. It's always a bit of a competition, <laughs> um, <clears throat> which I'm not sure is the best thing on a train, which I'm not sure is the best thing on a training camp to so see you can last the longest in a sauna. It's probably <laughs> awful for recovery, just like no water left in your body. <laughs> I was about to say, is, is there at some point it's counter, very counterintuitive <laughs> to stay in there for too long? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure we do more damage than we do good i'm not sure what the good actually is of a sauna but anyway <laughs> um yeah so, so that's <laughs> yeah the, the the running up there is pretty good as well um there's a few like roads down in jinderbun where we do thresholds and do the long run um and there's a good like 1k sort of gravel road in Perisher, which, which is, which we usually do the K reps and stuff on. So we can, I mean, and there's a track in Jindabyne as well. So we can like replicate basically all our training, um, in Perisher that we usually do in Canberra. So 
yeah, it's great fun. I really wish more people get there. I don't know why everybody goes to Falls Creek. That I've, I went to Falls Creek like three years ago. That place is just, just horrible. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I mean, there's the running there is just like nowhere near. <laughs> I mean, there's like mm. 200 people. Uh, I mean, it's good culture and whatever, but like, it's just the running's just not that great. The ca- the quarter sessions on like this single yeah. trail where you're gonna roll your ankle all the time, and it's like the K reps are similar. I mean, the hill session's tough. That's a, that's a good session, but <laughs> it's just like nowhere near as good as Perisher in terms of like actually getting quality in mm. if you really want it. <laughs> Yeah, interesting. What what was the um what was the study you were doing if you can talk about it? Or I'm not I'm sure sometimes you can't, but yeah, what was it, if you can? Um Yeah, so they're actually trialing um APO on me. No <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember exactly what it was. <laughs> no, it was um it was um some oh, it was something to do with uh uh something in pomegranates well pomegranates has this um i don't even know what's called actually this sounds Uh, right up dom's alley (laughs) (laughs) well not like pomegranates that they put in these tablets um and they were trialing them for like muscle recovery so they got us to do this downhill run on mondays which you could take basically as easy as hard as you wanted to um Mm -hmm. And some people were flogging and I was like, mate, I got a track session on Tuesday. Like why, <clears throat> why, why am I going to take this any quicker than I need to? Um, so they, the point of that downhill was to like tear up your muscles as, as well, not as much as you can, but just to like tear up your muscles a little bit. Mm. And they wanted to see um, how well you could kind of recover from these things. So they take your bloods either side of that um, downhill run on Monday morning and yeah, basically see what the results were from that. They'd also do VO2 max trialing before and after the <clears throat> the altitude camp, which went for three weeks at the at the AIS. Yep. So you had a week at the AIS on either side of that three week period. Right. Um, so yeah, they did VO2s and <clears throat> sorry, a bunch of other tests. Um, yeah, so they're basically just giving you all these these, these tablets every single day to to pump, which is great. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I don't, I can't actually remember. It's actually really bugging me. I can't remember what the name of this this drug was that we were taking, but apparently they've been trialing it over in the NBA, and mm-hmm. um, whatever. So and that I don't know if they'd found any success there, but um, ACU decided that they'd run a similar sort of study, um, and see if it actually worked. So it was it was it was really fun as well. I mean, having all all that sort of paid for, and and um, the food there was like anything better than I'd be cooking by myself over it over the lodge with dick i mean the two minute noodle died over there she usually she usually gets going pretty early on in the camp um yeah so so that was that was a lot of fun and i think that's called enduro actually i should give it a little bit of a plug so i was on the enduro two camp there was an enduro one camp i think the, um the summer before oh no sorry october before i got there i went there in january and there's an enduro three um in October, which I think people might still be able to apply for. I mean, it's pretty easy. They, yeah, I, mean, they, I think they still want people. Um, but yeah, no, it's just definitely a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, I'd recommend it if if it's open by the time this podcast comes out. <laughs> and what was the um, what was the <laughs> altitude like in terms of? Have you done it many times before? Like, do you feel it quite a lot? Um, I actually think. It's it's not too bad. Uh, I've done it every year since I think yeah 2018 2019 summer. So yeah, yeah. I, w- I mean, I went to Falls Creek and then I think two or three times at Perisher. Um, I th- I think this is true and it, um, it's something that's commonly sort of brought up is the more times you go to altitude, the less time it takes to sort of get used to it. And I found mm. definitely the first time it was it was a bit hard. Um, I might have also been under reading the first time at Falls Creek because I was roommating. <clears throat> sorry, I was sharing rooms with JJ and he was eating all the food. Um, <laughs> that's Josh Johnson, by the way. So I think I came off that. Like, <laughs> that's actually pretty funny. He wanted to go up and lose weight that trip because he came just came back came off injury or something. 
And um, I was like rooming with him and he just kept needing all the food and I ended up like losing like <laughs> four kilos or something in like three weeks. <laughs> and, and he's like, he's like the same way. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I think probably the biggest thing is actually to make sure you're eating well and so you can actually sustain like your training up there. Um, but yeah, in terms of actually adjusting to altitude, you definitely get better, but obviously you can feel things like the K reps, yeah, when you're really going for those big sort of aerobic pushes, like your threshold's going to be slower. The K reps definitely going to be slower. Um, yeah, you, you can you can notice it, but you just kind of got to realize, um, like it shouldn't be a knock on your confidence or anything. You just kind of got to realize that's that's it is what it is up at altitude. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just make sure you're fueling and recovering well because it definitely takes a lot longer at altitude for sure. Awesome. And um, I guess coming back, you said you did. Uh, in the study, some VO2 max testing. Uh, was there any difference there or? Um, not actually, oh, not really in the VO2, to be honest. I actually can't, I don't think we really got our results for the second lot of testing. Um, it was kind of interesting though, because my VO2 actually wasn't like that big. Um, it's just like 70 basically on the smack, um, on the nose. Um, but what they found was pretty, pretty good for me was my like running economy. I mean, out of the previous enduro camps, um, I had like probably, I think it was the best running economy. So, which is kind of funny cause I got a big arm swing. So I'm not sure how they measure that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, so, so that was, that was kind of good. Um, and that's obviously a big component for running. So the guy after seeing like, the running economy stats is like, um, yeah, you should probably try go to the marathon. So maybe that's what helped me with the M7 more than anything. Why? Well, I guess I didn't need as much food <laughs> as other people. Um, but yeah, so so the VO2 wasn't massive. Running economy was good, and I can't really remember what else they really test. Oh, sorry, they tested lactate threshold. That sucked. That was actually awful. <laughs> um, so <laughs> how did they test? How did they test the for threshold? Um, how do, oh, so they take your blood. Yeah. They take the blood. Um, yeah, I think, so we had to do a few tests like on the treadmill before the VO2 and then you do your VO2 and obviously you're pretty gassed after the VO2 and they take your blood after that. And I think they saw like us. So the testing, I think it was like four minute reps you needed to do before the VO2 max. You had to do like a set of four, four by four minute reps or something. And that should be like a pretty flat line. And then, yeah, so they saw that the progression was pretty, pretty steady, like a, <clears throat> sorry, pretty flat line. Um, usually you expect to be like a bit of a, an even sort of gradient, like a sort of Y equals X kind of like 45 degree angle or something. I've, I've no idea. I might even be talking out of my ass here. Um, <clears throat> but <laughs> basically, basically they saw the VO2, like right after the VO2 was just like so much higher than, um, <laughs> than the other ones or something. So yeah, the, <laughs> that was a bit of a knock on the confidence. I was like, damn, I can never be a, a 200 runner if I wanted to, but anyway, <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, and I guess that's kind of what stings me when I go out hard. So that's why pulling back might actually help. Mm, it's interesting. Have you um, yeah. done any other studies before or is this the first one? No, that was the first one. Um, yeah, I mean, it was great. All the testing and stuff can be, <clears throat> I don't know, can be can be a bit not, not invasive or anything, just a bit foreign, like mm-hmm. running on a treadmill with a nose plug just feels a bit weird and <clears throat> yeah, whatever. It's just kind of like, but no, it's, it's, it's great. I'm glad I got all those tests done. It hasn't really changed how I, how I train or anything, but it's just mm. kind of, I guess good good to know that sort of stuff. I was going to say mm-hmm. how do you normally are you normally paying attention to a lot of different metrics with your training in terms of how you're gauging um sort of what your threshold is is it like perceived effort or are you looking at heart rate pace what what's the main way you sort of gauge that? Uh definitely somebody who does it off feel. Yeah. Um I mean it's good having sort of folks around this well it's good and bad having um folks around the same level as you because like sometimes in the threshold runs i mean me and parker kind of want to push it um where we should hold back but like sometimes we we give the nod and we're like yeah we should take this easier um so it's it's good that you can kind of pace off yourself if it's if it's like another threshold we can kind of just 
just work <clears throat> work together and feel like what what a threshold might be. Um, but yeah, definitely somebody who doesn't really like to dive too much into into splits even or yep. or heart rate or any of that sort of stuff. I mean, if you're having a yeah, I mean, if you're having a bad day, I'll ha- I'll happily just say like, Dick, I'm I'm not feeling crash hot. Like I'll probably just sit at the back of this session, um, mm-hmm. which could be well off the pace of off the guys at the front. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not really somebody who um, yeah, pays too much attention to that sort of stuff. I th- also think the threshold pace that they gave me for that VO2 um, te- sort of testing, they gave me a threshold pace of like 324 per k. I was like, that's oh, probably a bit slower mm-hmm. than I could run for an hour. Oh. And I think I think they kind of acknowledge that as well. So um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, something that yeah, I'm I'm not too fussed about. But um, that seems yeah, w- that seems off. No. Like, yeah, I'd off. say so. I th- yeah, I'd say so. I think it's. I also like everyone sort of says this after a VO two max test, but it's like, damn, I could have gone harder. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe I could have for sure. But yeah, at three three twenty four, I think I should easily be able to give that a nudge for <laughs> yeah. for, for an hour. Yeah. What's yeah. the um? <laughs> so what you might have touched on it briefly, but what did they get you? What did you do for the testing for the VO two testing? Was it the four minutes or was that something different? No, yeah, that was that was some that was the thing before. So it was like four by f- four minutes. I think I think that was it. Um, with basically a minute recovery. And what they do there, so it was all on the treadmill. Yeah. What they do there is they would um they kind of figure out a pace. So they'd go fifteen to nineteen K an hour on the treadmill. Mm. Um and so you'd start off your first or maybe it was five by four hundred. Or maybe yeah, and he's no, actually sorry, take this back. It was fifteen to eighteen Ks. And so every four minute rep you'd start at fifteen Ks an hour. And then the second rep you'd start at sixteen Ks an hour. Third rep you'd start at seventeen. And then the fourth rep you'd start at eighteen Ks an hour. Um and yeah, you do each of those paces for four minutes. Mm-hmm. And then it was like catch your breath for a, a couple of minutes after that. And what that was actually testing was the running economy stat, I think, as well as a little bit of the lactate uh, sort okay. of um, testing. And then, yeah. and yeah, you'd have a couple of minutes um, just to gather your breath, um, have a swig of water, and then you jump on the VO2 max test. And then, so they'd sort of figure out your pace um, beforehand and they figured 15 to 19 Ks, they'd work in a similar sort of range, sorry. 15 to 19 Ks an hour is how the VO2 max um test was worked out for me um so you'd start out at 15 k's an hour and then every 30 seconds they'd jump it up half a kilometer an hour quicker so it went 15 15 and a half 16 16 and a half whatever all the way up to 19 for me and then once you got to 19 k's an hour they'd start increasing the gradient um so every 30 seconds it would go up half a percent in the gradient which was actually just hell, like 90 Ks an hour at, at whatever gradient I got up to was just like, it was so bad. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I'm not too strong on the uphills and that was just, yeah, it was just awful. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so that, was, that was kind of interesting. And one thing about VO2 max testing as well is like, it's not about how long you can stay on the treadmill. Like you, you've reached your VO2 at a certain amount at a certain point in time and then you can keep on running at your vo2 for like i i don't know however however long but um yeah there's a point where it starts to plateau um and that's kind of like when the test is well, i'm not sure if the test is done but like they can kind of see that you've maxed out your vo2 there hmm. um and i yeah and i think it was still sort of i'm not sure that it quite reached the plateau for me but yeah i was definitely gassed by that point anyway um yeah so so I think I lasted a fair while, but anyway. And what, um, Dom, you've done testing before, I think. Yeah. I'm going to, yeah, um, okay, cool. What was it like for you? Yeah, it was the same test. Um, and I think that, yeah, my speed was like the same, like 19 k's an hour, which is, uh, I think they've probably got yours wrong, Charlie. <laughs> um, but yeah, the same thing where it, they built up the speed and then the gradient starts to rise as well. But, um, yeah, uh, I felt like, yeah, I definitely could have pushed it a bit more. And I think my max heart rate was like 190, 
92 or 93 when like, I don't know, in training kind of like anecdotally I've gone above that before, but I felt like, yeah, I pushed it pretty hard and um, looking at the graph, I could see that it had started to plateau. So I think that it was like a more accurate reading probably. Yeah, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't need to get it done, do I? It doesn't tell you that much. <laughs> Or nah. <laughs> no, nah, not really. I mean, it's just a number to put against your name. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how accurate the Garmin, yeah. the one on Garmin surely can't be accurate. That thing keeps telling me certain things. I don't listen to it anymore. That's for sure. Especially about recovery and <laughs> how much you've smashed your workouts <laughs> yeah, exactly. and stuff. Yeah, see what the three day recovery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. After a big session, it's like, <laughs> or I'll do a threshold and it'll say, um, VO2, you've been in your VO2 max and then it'll say like four days recovery. So I, I stopped listening to that one. So that's good. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just got to tell Dick, sorry, can't make Tuesday session. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Garmin told me otherwise. Yeah. Should have gone for the jog, the, the 40 minute jog this morning, Dick. <laughs> got, I've got a 24 hour recovery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Dom, maybe go into, do you want to give a bit of a training update for yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, so this past week was um, dog sitting at a friend's house, which was uh, pretty fun. It's good having a, a little dog to come home to and um, wake up in the morning to, take for walks. Um, yeah, so that meant like I was getting up a little earlier each day. Um just to get him out for a walk. Uh, but yeah, it was good getting on the trails a lot more because the house is like right next to the trails. So um, pretty much all the runs were on the trails, which is good. Uh, the key kind of sessions, um, I think on, on Thursday, we had the public holiday. So I went down to Centennial with um, the turbo guys and we hit up the hills there. The session was... Um, two by 20 minutes and yeah, it was pretty fun. So much better at running with other people like, um, and just going up and down the hill, you can see everyone, um, as you're passing them going down or, or up it. Um, that was really fun and good morale. Good to catch up with all those guys. Uh, and then the other kind of big session, I guess, was the park run on the weekend with, um, Smitty. I, uh, oh yeah. You you mean your your jog around roads, <laughs> <laughs> the embarrassing jog. Yeah, just just another day in the office for me. Uh, <laughs> taking the win off Smitty again. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then we headed into the city and did a gym session that afternoon, What's it? which was good. But um, I haven't been in the gym for like probably I don't know six months or so. So I was pretty sore today for the long run oh yeah but um the long run i went actually down to funny farm charlie brought it up earlier um and did 20 times the monster loop Oof. just trying to get some hills in for this oh my god <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was just yeah it was a bit of a grind saw um jai down there actually which is like pretty funny i guess all the uh central performance guys have never left um but yeah, no, that was kind of the week in a nutshell. Tw what about you, Smith? 20, Dom. 20. 20, <laughs> 20 yeah. <laughs> what, what made you do that calculus? <laughs> Why 20? Oh, uh, well, I just need to get more hills in. Like, um, this run is going to be brutal. And, um, yeah, I think that if I can get yeah, as much hills in as possible and something like that, it's a... A re like a, a session that I've done before in the past and can kind of benchmark like times and efforts and things like that too. So um, it was good to, yeah, have a go. Mm, did you did you go as hard or did you really tone it back a bit at least to get through the 20? Yeah, so I think I was doing them in like 235, 240, whereas I think back in the day I'd do them in like 215, um, and then, but you'd only do like five or six of them. Yeah, right. Okay. And you do you do the last rep in one fifty five? No, just kidding. And Charlie would do like <laughs> an extra two reps or something. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? How's your week going? Yeah, my week has gone well. Uh, so it was probably the last last week of fuller training before tapering for Melbourne, which is next week. So I think Monday, Monday after the Sunday long run, I took the day off, which is a little bit unusual for for a Monday, but I guess it's well part of the taper, um, which is good. So I actually just got out and did a bit of running with, or sort of not running, but with mum in breakfast point, as she also trains for her 5K that's coming up. Um, and then Tuesday, Tuesday was kind of the last big, yeah, so the last big session I did 80-minute tempo, um, which was solid, which was solid. I was happy with the way it went. It was stronger than the previous Tuesday. I decided to pick up the pace a little bit more than the previous tempo, which is good. Um, Wednesday, I did 60 minutes easy. And then Thursday, no session. It was 60 minutes easy, which is good. Friday, I had off. And then Saturday, we went to park run and Dom kind of just embarrassed me as usual. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I ran, what was it? 16, 13, Dom? Yeah. Or no, six, yeah, 16, 13, 16, 12 for you. But I mean, you probably could have run 15, 45 if we're, if we're being honest. <laughs> but um, it was, no, it was all right. I went out, I went out a bit quick. Um, I'm not used to doing, I think the whole, premise of the marathon training has been doing easy uh sorry doing tempo stuff nothing too quick so i kind of struggled at struggled to find where i can push myself in a 5k just because it's a lot different work than i'm used to but i mean it was still can we pull the humidity card dom what do you reckon <laughs> yeah no it was pretty humid okay good humid it was humid <laughs> um <laughs> And then Sunday, today it was it was three by. I did uh, three by six minute reps, so not not as substantial as in terms of a long run as I normally would, which obviously is one week to go. But um, yeah, so three of those in total, um, and I'm feeling yeah feeling pretty good, starting to get the bit of the um, pre race nerves but i'm i'm more like feeling like i'm ready i feel like my lungs are strong i've done a lot of work for the for the marathon specifically so yeah training's going good now it's just about mm, don't get sick um and recover well and and yeah make it to sunday actually one annoying thing i just got an email being like you're not in the preferred start so oh seriously yeah so i have to figure out because there's going to be half marathon runners there as well apparently so if i don't get in front of them i'm kind of screwed so i'm probably gonna have to get there super early which is not that bad i'll probably just you know stand stand at the front anyway and see how i go because i want to want to get into a pack of people i don't want to sort of be in no man's land but we'll see how we go should be fine do you um get to put your gels and stuff out then no no no. they'll be going in the they'll be going in the that kind of gives me more anxiety than keeping them on me, to be honest. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be definitely not be able to put put them out, but I'll have them in my shorts. Hopefully they don't, they don't fall out, but I've done some testing. I've done quite a bit of testing and training to make sure I didn't don't have a repeat of the first Melbourne marathon that I did in trying gels that I'm not <laughs> used to. So... Um, that can't end well, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So... Oh, mate, it's, it's, yeah, I've talked about it before. It ends, yeah, not well. Your guts are just screaming at you the entire time. But I mean, live and learn, I guess. I don't know. But um, yeah, I'm I'm keen. I'm keen. I'm keen to race now. Yeah, well, looking forward to it. I reckon. Um, yeah, you're gonna rip it. Yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um. Okay. Before Charlie, you mentioned um, your job kind of getting in the way of training. How does like that running kind of life balance all work? Um, yeah, actually not too bad. Just get up earlier and 
go to well not go to bed later but um yeah it's i mean it's not too bad just nine to nine to five kind of thing i can work from home whenever i want as well which is which is all right um but yeah i mean it, the only session i miss out on is is thursdays which i'm like not too disappointed in um that's been working out kind of well for me just doing my own thing on thursdays anyway um sort of can really focus on the other two sessions when i'm with the squad gives me a chance to recover and, and do what i need to do kind of thing so yeah i'm do actually you, like kind of, kind of finding it not too bad at the moment what are you doing um for what are you doing for work during the nine to five oh, I, I just work for this um it sourcing company which is it's probably the most oh i was gonna give it all right <laughs> so we're gonna say it's probably the most boring job title ever and like we're contracted to the ato uh, at the moment so it's like probably just like <laughs> it's kind of funny um uh yeah so it's not like the most exciting thing in the world but i just kind of wanted a job to keep myself entertained during the day <laughs> and yeah, that's more course. money than than when i graduated from from uni um so yeah i've been doing that since may and it's um it's actually, I mean, I've started improving since May. So, um, yeah, I guess, I guess it's been doing fine. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess it's a job. <laughs> yeah, no, I guess it doesn't, uh, doesn't take, well, if you're doing like, if you're on your feet or stuff like that, I'd be it's sort of concerned with fatigue, especially given you're doing high mileage, but, um, I don't know, it should be should be okay. Dom and I have talked about in the past where we sometimes we feel the fatigue during work, but I'm not sure if that's just us being or me specifically being a little bit soft, but you know, well, you never know. <laughs> what fatigue from running? Yeah, you're like you work. carry it into work. You you sort of carry it oh, into Oh, for work. sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I've just got so much instant coffee at my desk. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Probably I think I've got a bad coffee addiction now. <laughs> Yeah, that um, comes part yeah, and parcel with the nine to five. Yeah, yeah, um, which is kind of funny, but also kind of sad as well. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, but definitely sort of feel that. And you feel like getting a bit stiff as well. Um, so I try and work from home on sessions day, so Tuesdays and Thursdays, just so I can move around the house and drop a lunge if I want to without looking weird at the office kind of thing. <laughs> I can't, can't really, can't really just like get up against the wall and do a leg swing <laughs> in like a pants and boots or whatever. I don't think, yeah, I don't think those <laughs> pants would allow it anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They definitely yeah, won't. So... Plus, you can't really, you can't really air your yeah. feet or anything like that with the with the um office shoes. I've found like after a hard session. Um, the the last thing you want to do is put those constricting <laughs> shoes on, if you know what I mean. Oh and yeah, walk around the office. Yeah, no, I know, but I have done it. I've, I've definitely freed the feet at the desk a few times. <laughs> I just, well, I just got to remember to put them on when I go to the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you could wear some um, hocker, yeah. some one of those hocker slides or or some Crocs, and see if anyone thinks you've lost. Yeah. The that would actually be pretty funny, getting some black Crocs or something. <laughs> Maybe brown. Oh, Trendy brown Crocs. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I definitely see what you're saying. Um, sometimes getting into work is just like you can, you can feel it. You can feel the jog in, in, the, in the legs and whatever. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about um, – what about what about nutrition? Like, how is how do you sort of view nutrition and, and the way it um, mixes in with running, and how's it sort of have your views on it changed as well over time? This would be hilarious. I'm glad my housemates are still at Wollongong at the moment. I haven't walked in yet because um, they <laughs> they kind of know my nutrition is just like so all over the shop. <laughs> um, it's definitely like because they're they're like really good cooks. One of my housemates, um, so it's it's a couple um jack and alice and alice is like parents like chefs or something so alice is like a great cook and jack's like basically an equal is good cook um and they're like making all these noodles and whatever from scratch and pasta from scratch and everything and i'm like reheating like frozen chicken from a week ago <laughs> it's just like it's pretty, it gets pretty dire at times I, I try and do the big i try and do the big weekly shop on sunday nights um and then i kind of run out of food by about thursday and try and just ration 
like things out from the local IGA. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, um, I just try and eat basically a lot of carbs, just really a lot of carbs. Um, yep. Like heaps of white bread. Um, breakfast is always the same. It's always a cup of oats, um, a scoop of protein powder, a banana, and um, a bit of honey. Um, so, yeah, I feel like that's pretty good after a run and it kind of fills you up for a little while. Also, have a coffee in there at some point. Um, mm-hmm. Pretty obscure coffee order, large flat white. Um, <laughs> trying to remember that one. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty funny. I go to this trendy coffee shop near me and everyone's got all these funny orders. And I'm like, all right, here's a curveball for you. Um, <laughs> and hit him with that. And it just, it sh- and it just shocks them at 7 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> What no, you it mean? doesn't. You don't want oat, <laughs> you don't want oat milk with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so their their heads are rattled for the next few hours. Um, <laughs> anyway, so so that's basically it. And then yeah, lunch is usually like a sandwich, like just yeah, like a some sort of like peanut butter sandwich and and a couple of bananas or something. I usually have a lot of fruit as well. And then dinners dinners basically um yeah. 